today we're going to make a small quantity of elemental bromine. In order to do so, we need uh, three chemicals. First thing we'll need is some hydrochloric acid, which is readily available as muriatic acid at pool stores. Also at the pool store, you're going to find this two-part bromine system for spas and swimming pools. This part of it is sodium bromide solution, 35%. This will be the source of our bromine. The last thing we need is some, again, from the pool and spa supply place, some something called shock, which is uh, chlorine, and actually consists of calcium hypochlorite. We're going to use this calcium hypochlorite and the muriatic pool acid to make a chlorine gas generator. The chlorine gas will be bubbled through the sodium bromide solution. The chlorine will displace the bromine and will be able to distill off the bromine and save it in an ampoule, or at least that's the idea. Let's give this a try. Here's the setup for the first step of making bromine. About a third full 500 milliliter round bottom boiling flask, a third full of the sodium bromide 35% solution. <coughs> There's a glass tube here, L-tube, leading through the rubber stopper and down to the bottom of the flask. The other end of this is connected to our chlorine gas generator, which consists of an Erlenmeyer vacuum flask and a 250 milliliter SUP funnel. The SUP funnel has been filled with the hydrochloric acid. Some of the calcium hypochlorite has been placed in the bottom of this Erlenmeyer flask. I'm now going to allow hydrochloric acid to start dripping in to the flask You only want a bit dripping in at a time. Now chlorine is generated. We can see the green gas, or greenish yellow gas, forming in there. And there's an immediate color change in the sodium bromide as chlorine gas begins to bubble through, displacing the bromine from the sodium bromide will wind up with the free bromine in this flask and of course some sodium chloride. And zoom in on this a little better. Don't need to see the SEP funnel really. We just need to see the chlorine being generated and bubbled through the rubber hose and down into our 500 milliliter boiling flask. Now I can slow down this chlorine a bit by reducing the drip rate of the hydrochloric acid. As more bromine is displaced from the sodium bromide by the chlorine gas, our solution in the 500 milliliter boiling flask continues to darken and become more bromine-like in color. Also, bromine vapor can be seen accumulating inside this flask. 
this experiment has to be done with high-powered ventilation. I'm running mine right now. You may be able to hear the roar of the ventilation system in the background. Ventilation is so good here that I can't smell any chlorine or any bromine, period. And that's the way it has to be for safety with these poisonous and potentially dangerous gases. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature, but a little bit of heat and it will quite happily evaporate and uh, potentially fill the room with gagging, sick, poisonous fumes. Chlorine generator is still working. We're still bubbling chlorine through here. Bring the flask a little closer to the camera, and yes, we can see the bubbling action of the chlorine gas bubbling through the sodium bromide solution. This reaction will be nearing completion, and I will pick up the video when I am ready to set up for the simple distillation of bromine. I've set up for simple distillation to recover the bromine that I've made. The 500 milliliter round bottom flask is now in the heating mantle, and heat is applied. Water is running through the condenser jacket. I've got plenty of uh, ice packs in my five gallon water bucket. I'm using a plastic bag with ice cubes at the end of the condenser to keep that part cool on my vacuum takeoff adapter. And then there's a hundred milliliter round bottom flask in an ice bath contained in this 500 milliliter beaker here. All of this to keep the bromine cold and keep it from turning to bromine gas. I'll pick up the video again when bromine actually starts to distill over and be collected. The heating mandle is heated up, and bromine can now be seen distilling across to the collection flask. It's a little difficult to see, but bromine is accumulating slowly in the bottom of the collection flask. Water is, of course, coming over as well, but that's normal for this simple distillation of bromine. As the bromine continues to distill over, we can see that the color in the 500 milliliter boiling flask is lightening as bromine is removed. A fair amount of the bromine has come across and I was starting to get a lot of uh, water coming across, so 
I've put a fan blowing air onto my three-way adapter so that a bit of refluxing can happen here and the water can condense and drip back down into the flask while the bromine continues to come over. Some bromine is still dripping into the collection flask so the simple distillation will need to continue for a little while yet. Another quick look at the process as it slowly comes to an end. We can see that the liquid in the boiling flask is now a much, much lighter color, and I'm going to stop the simple distillation shortly. I've stopped the water flow to the condenser, turned off the heating mandle, let things cool down, but as we can see, there's still bromine in my glassware. I don't really want to open this and let the bromine fumes come out into the room. I'd like to neutralize them. Using sulfites, such as sodium metabisulfite or sodium bisulfite, will neutralize the bromine. I'm going to add some sulfites right now. Maybe one gram was just added. And we can see there's pretty much an immediate removal of the bromine. We'll allow the sulfites to work, and then it'll be safe for me to uh, open up and clean my glassware. Here is a look at the product. We can see in the bottom of this 100 milliliter round bottom flask that there's a layer of bromine water on top of a layer of elemental bromine. Here I have a pipette eyedropper, an empty glass uh, ampoule here to put the bromine in with the pipette, and I'm going to use the pipette to uh, suck up the bottom layer of bromine and put it into the ampoule. So let's set up for this and get started. It's time to start pipetting over the bromine.
I should remark that although I'm very close to the bromine here, my exhaust is so powerful that I can't smell a thing. It's as if I'm working with distilled water. My ventilation is so powerful here. And that's exactly the kind of ventilation you need to work with things like chlorine or bromine. And there's very little bromine left in the round bottom flask just about at the end of the recovery. Which is just as well, because my ampoule is almost full. I'll call it quits there. What's left is too small to pick up. So, Again, we'll need the sodium bisulfite or sodium metabisulfite, and we will neutralize anything remaining. And there's the result, an ampoule of bromine, ready to be flame-sealed with my torch. Here's the end result of my little bromine synthesis. A couple of milliliters of elemental bromine have been sealed into this glass ampoule. I prefer ampoules for things like bromine, because bromine has a habit of leaking out of the tiniest little gap or crevice. Therefore, I didn't want to keep it in any kind of screw top or stoppered container. I have plenty of these ampules, so why not use them and have a perfectly sealed container?